Life is complex. Join us for the simple gifts of wisdom, love, and delight in the written word. John Milton's Paradise Lost, Book 3, Lines 1 through 166. Hail, holy light, offspring of heaven firstborn. Or of the eternal co-eternal beam, may I express thee unblamed? Since God is light, and never but in unapproached light dwelt from eternity, dwelt then in thee, bright effluence of bright essence in create. Or hearst thou rather pure ethereal stream, whose fountain who shall tell? Before the sun, before the heavens thou wert, and at the voice of God, as with a mantle didst invest the rising world of waters dark and deep, one from the void and formless infinite. Thee I revisit now with bolder wing, escape the Stygian pool, though long detained in that obscure sojourn, while in my flight through utter and through middle darkness born, with other notes than to the Orphean lyre I sung of chaos and eternal night. Taught by the heavenly muse to venture down the dark descent, and up to reascend, though hard and rare. Thee I revisit safe, and feel thy sovereign vital lamp. But thou revisitest not these eyes, that roll in vain to find thy piercing ray, and find no dawn. So thick a drop serene hath quenched their orbs, or dim suffusion veiled. Yet not the more cease I to wander, where the muses haunt, clear spring, or shady grove, or sunny hill, smit with the love of sacred song. But chief thee, Zion, and the flowery brooks beneath, that wash thy hallowed feet, and warbling flow, nightly I visit. Nor sometimes forget, so were I equaled with them in renown, thy sovereign command, that man should find grace. Blind Thamyrus, and blind Maonides, and Tiresias, and Phineas, prophets old, then feed on thoughts that voluntary move harmonious numbers, as the wakeful bird sings darkling, and in shadiest covert hid tunes her nocturnal note. Thus with the year seasons return, but not to me returns day, or the sweet approach of even or morn or sight of vernal bloom, or summer's rose, or flocks, or herds, or human face divine, but cloud instead. And ever during dark surrounds me, from the cheerful ways of men cut off, and for the book of knowledge fair presented with a universal blank of nature's works, to me expunged and raised, and wisdom at one entrance quite shut out. So much the rather thou, celestial light, shine inward, and the mind through all her powers irradiate. There plant eyes, all mist from thence purge and disperse, that I may see and tell of things invisible to mortal sight. Now had the Almighty Father from above, from the pure Empyrean where he sits high throned above all height, bent down his eye, his own works and their works at once to view. About him all the sanctities of heaven stood thick as stars, and from his sight received beatitude past utterance. On his right the radiant image of his glory sat, his only Son. On earth he first beheld our two first parents, yet the only two of mankind in the happy garden placed, reaping immortal fruits of joy and love, uninterrupted joy, unrivaled love, in blissful solitude. He then surveyed hell and the gulf between, and Satan there coasting the wall of heaven on this side night in the dun air sublime and ready now to stoop with wearied wings and willing feet on the bare outside of this world that seemed firm land embosomed, without firmament, uncertain which in ocean or in air, him God beholding from his prospect high, wherein past, present, future he beholds, 
thus to his only Son foreseeing, spake. Only begotten Son, seest thou what rage transports our adversary, whom no bounds prescribe, no bars of hell, nor all the chains heaped on him there, nor yet the main abyss wide interrupt can hold? So bent he seems on desperate revenge, that shall redound upon his own rebellious head. And now, through all restraint broke loose, he wings his way not far off heaven, in the precincts of light, directly towards the new created world, and man there placed, with purpose to essay if him by force he can destroy. or worse, by some false guile, pervert, and shall pervert, for man will hearken to his glozing lies, and easily transgress the sole command, sole pledge of his obedience. So will fall he and his faithless progeny. Whose fault? Whose but his own? Ingrate, he had of me all he could have. I made him just and right, sufficient to have stood, though free to fall. Such I created all the ethereal powers and spirits, both them who stood and them who failed. Freely they stood who stood, and fell who fell. Not free, what proof could they have given sincere of true allegiance, constant faith or love? where only what they needs must do appeared, not what they would? What praise could they receive? What pleasure I from such obedience paid, when will and reason, reason also is choice, useless and vain, of freedom both despoiled, made passive both, had served necessity, not me? They, therefore, as to right belonged, so were created, nor can justly accuse their maker, or their making, or their fate, as if predestination overruled their will disposed by absolute decree, or high foreknowledge they themselves decreed their own revolt. Not I. If I foreknew, foreknowledge had no influence on their fault which had no less proved certain unforeknown. So without least impulse or shadow of fate, or aught by me immutably foreseen, they trespass. Authors to themselves in all, both what they judge and what they choose. For so I formed them free, and free they must remain, till they enthrall themselves. I else must change their nature, and revoke the high decree unchangeable, eternal, which ordained their freedom. They themselves ordained their fall. The first sort by their own suggestion fell, self-tempted, self-depraved. Man falls, deceived by the other first. Man, therefore, shall find grace. The other, none. In mercy and justice both, through heaven and earth, so shall my glory excel. But mercy, first and last, shall brightest shine. Thus while God spake, ambrosial fragrance filled all heaven, and in the blessed spirit's elect, sense of new joy ineffable diffused. Beyond compare the Son of God was seen most glorious. In him all his Father shone substantially expressed, and in his face divine compassion visibly appeared. Love without end, and without measure grace, which uttering thus he to his Father spake, O Father, gracious was that word which closed thy sovereign command, that man should find grace for which both heaven and earth shall high extol thy praises, with the innumerable sound of hymns and sacred songs, wherewith thy throne encompassed shall resound the ever-blessed, for should man finally be lost, should man, thy creature late so loved, thy youngest son, 
fall circumvented thus by fraud, though joined with his own folly? That be from thee far, that far be from thee, Father, who art judge of all things made, and judgest only right. Or shall the adversary thus obtain his end, and frustrate thine? Shall he fulfill his malice, and thy goodness bring to naught, or proud return, through to his heavier doom, yet with revenge accomplished, and to hell draw after him the whole race of mankind, by him corrupted? Or wilt thou thyself abolish thy creation, and unmake for him what for thy glory thou hast made? So should thy goodness and thy greatness both be questioned and blasphemed without defense. Tis the gift to be simple. Tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we will not be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight, till by turning, turning, we come round right. Life is complex. Join us for the simple gifts of wisdom, love, and delight in the written word. John Milton's Paradise Lost, Book 3, Lines 167 through 371. To whom the great Creator thus replied, O Son, in whom my soul hath chief delight, Son of my bosom, Son who art alone, My word, my wisdom, and effectual might, All hast thou spoken as my thoughts are, All as my eternal purpose hath decreed. Man shall not quite be lost, but saved who will. Yet not of will in him, but grace in me freely vouchsafed. Once more I will renew his lapsed powers, though forfeit, and enthralled by sin to foul exorbitant desires, upheld by me, yet once more he shall stand on even ground against his mortal foe. By me upheld, that he may know how frail his fallen condition is, and to me owe all his deliverance, and to none but me. Some I have chosen of peculiar grace, elect above the rest, so is my will. The rest shall hear me call, and oft be warned their sinful state, and to appease betimes the incensed deity, while offered grace invites. For I will clear their senses dark what may suffice, and soften stony hearts to pray, repent, and bring obedience due. To prayer, repentance, and obedience due, though but endeavored with sincere intent, mine ear shall not be slow, mine eye not shut, and I will place within them as a guide my umpire, conscience whom, if they will hear, light after light, well used, they shall attain and to the end, persisting, safe arrive. This my long sufferance, and my day of grace, they who neglect and scorn shall never taste. But hard be hardened, blind be blinded more, that they may stumble on, and deeper fall and none but such from mercy I exclude. But yet all is not done. Man disobeying, disloyal, breaks his fealty, and sins against the high supremacy of heaven, affecting Godhead. And so, losing all, to expiate his treason hath naught left, but to destruction sacred and devote. He with his whole posterity must die. Die he, or justice, must, unless for him some other able, and as willing, pay the rigid satisfaction, death for death. Say, heavenly powers, where shall we find such love? Which of you will be mortal to redeem man's mortal crime, and just the unjust to save? 
Dwells in all heaven charity so dear? And silence was in heaven. On man's behalf he asked, but all the heavenly choir stood mute. Patron or intercessor, none appeared. Much less that durst upon his own head draw the deadly forfeiture and ransom set. And now without redemption all mankind must have been lost, adjudged to death and hell by doom severe, had not the Son of God, in whom the fullness dwells of love divine, his dearest mediation thus renewed. Father, thy word is past. Man shall find grace, and shall grace not find means that finds her way? the speediest of thy winged messengers, to visit all thy creatures, and to all comes unprevented, unimplored, unsought. Happy for man so coming, he her aid can never seek, once dead in sins and lost. Atonement for himself, or offering meat, indebted and undone, hath none to bring. Behold me, then, me for him, Life for life I offer. On me let thine anger fall. Account me man. I for his sake will leave thy bosom. And this glory next to thee freely put off. And for him lastly die well pleased. On me let death wreak all his rage. Under his gloomy power I shall not long lie vanquished. Thou hast given me to possess life in myself forever. By thee I live. Though now to death I yield, and am his due, all that of me can die. Yet that debt paid, thou wilt not leave me in the loathsome grave his prey, nor suffer my unspotted soul forever with corruption there to dwell. But I shall rise victorious, and subdue my vanquisher, spoiled of his vaunted spoil. Death, his death's wound shall then receive and stoop inglorious, of his mortal sting disarmed. I, through the ample air in triumph high, shall lead hell, captive maugre hell, and show the powers of darkness bound. Thou, at the sight pleased, out of heaven shalt look down and smile, while, by thee raised, I ruin all my foes. Death last and with his carcass glut the grave. Then with the multitude of my redeemed shall enter heaven, long absent, and return, Father, to see thy face, wherein no cloud of anger shall remain, but peace assured and reconcilement. Wrath shall be no more thenceforth, but in thy presence joy entire. His words here ended, but his meek aspect silent yet spake and breathed immortal love to mortal men, above which only shone filial obedience. As a sacrifice glad to be offered, he attends the will of his great father. Admiration seized all heaven. What this might mean, and whither tend, wondering. But soon the Almighty thus replied, O thou in heaven and earth, the only peace found out for mankind under wrath. O thou, my soul complacence, well thou know'st how dear to me are all my works, nor man the least, though last created, that for him I spare thee from my bosom and right hand to save, by losing thee a while, the whole race lost. Thou, therefore, whom thou only canst redeem, their nature also to thy nature join and be thyself man among men on earth, made flesh, when time shall be, a virgin seed, by wondrous birth. Be thou in Adam's room the head of all mankind, though Adam's son. As in him perish all men, so in thee, as from a second root, shall be restored as many as are restored, without thee none. His crime makes guilty all his sons. Thy merit, imputed, shall absolve them who renounce their own both righteous and unrighteous deeds, and live in thee transplanted, 
and from thee receive new life. So man, as is most just, shall satisfy for man, be judged and die, and dying rise, and rising with him raise his brethren, ransomed with his own dear life. So heavenly love shall outdo hellish hate, giving to death and dying to redeem, so dearly to redeem what hellish hate so easily destroyed, and still destroys in those who, when they may, accept not grace. Nor shalt thou, by descending to assume man's nature, lessen or degrade thine own, because thou hast, though throned in highest bliss equal to God, and equally enjoying godlike fruition, quit it all to save a world from utter loss, and hast been found by merit more than birthright, Son of God, found worthiest to be so by being good, far more than great or high, because in thee love hath abounded more than glory abounds. Therefore thy humiliation shall exalt with thee thy manhood also to this throne. Here shalt thou sit incarnate. Here shalt thou reign both God and man, son both of God and man, anointed universal king. All power I give thee, reign forever, and assume thy merits. Under thee, as head supreme, thrones, princedoms, powers, dominions I reduce. All knees to thee shall bow, of them that bide in heaven or earth or under earth in hell, when thou, attended gloriously from heaven, shalt in the sky appear, and from thee send the summoning archangels to proclaim thy dread tribunal, forthwith from all winds the living, and forthwith the sighted dead of all past ages, to the general doom shall hasten, such appeal shall rouse their sleep. Then all thy saints assembled, Thou shalt judge bad men and angels. They, arraigned, shall sink beneath thy sentence. Hell, her numbers full, thenceforth shall be forever shut. Meanwhile, the world shall burn, and from her ashes spring new heaven and earth, wherein the just shall dwell. And, after all their tribulations long, see golden days, fruitful of golden deeds, with joy and peace triumphing, and fair truth. Then thou thy regal scepter shalt lay by, for regal scepter then no more shall need. God shall be all in all. But all ye gods adore him, who to compass all this dies. Adore the Son, and honor him as me. No sooner had the Almighty ceased, but all the multitude of angels, with a shout loud as from numbers without number, sweet as from blessed voices, uttering joy, heaven rung with jubilee, and loud hosannas filled the eternal regions. Lowly, reverent, towards either throne they bow, and to the ground with solemn adoration down they cast their crowns inwove with amaranth and gold. Immortal amaranth, a flower which once in paradise, fast by the tree of life, began to bloom, but soon for man's offense to heaven removed, where first it grew, there grows, and flowers aloft shading the fount of life, and where the river of bliss through midst of heaven rolls, or Elysian flowers her amber stream. With these that never fade, the spirits elect bind their resplendent locks, enwreathed with beams. Now in loose garlands thick thrown off the bright pavement, that like a sea of jasper shone, empurpled with celestial roses, smiled. Then, crowned again, their golden harps they took, harps ever tuned, that glittering by their side like quivers hung, and with preamble sweet of charming symphony they introduce their sacred song, and waken raptures high. No voice exempt. No voice but well could join melodious part, such concord is in heaven. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, 
Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we will not be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight, till by turning, turning, we come round right. Life is complex. Join us for the simple gifts of wisdom, love, and delight in the written word. John Milton's Paradise Lost, Book 3, Lines 372 through 554. Thee, Father, first they sung omnipotent, immutable, immortal, infinite, eternal King, the author of all being, fountain of light, thyself invisible amidst the glorious brightness where thou sitst throned inaccessible. But when thou shadest the full blaze of thy beams, and through a cloud drawn round about thee like a radiant shrine, dark with excessive bright, thy skirts appear. Yet dazzle heaven, that brightest seraphim approach not, but with both wings veil their eyes. Thee next they sang of all creation first begotten Son, divine similitude, in whose conspicuous countenance, without cloud made visible, the Almighty Father shines, whom else no creature can behold. On thee impress the effulgence of his glory abides, transfused on thee his ample spirit rests. He, heaven of heavens, and all the power therein by thee created, and by thee threw down the aspiring dominations. Thou that day thy father's dreadful thunder didst not spare, nor stop thy flaming chariot wheels that shook heaven's everlasting frame, while o'er the next thou drovest of warring angels disarrayed. Back from pursuit thy powers, with loud acclaim thee only extolled, son of thy father's might, to execute fierce vengeance on his foes. Not so on man. Him through their malice fallen. Father of mercy and grace, thou didst not doom so strictly, but much more to pity incline. No sooner did thy dear and only son perceive thee purposed not to doom frail man so strictly, but much more to pity inclined. He to appease thy wrath and end the strife of mercy and justice in thy face discerned, regardless of the bliss wherein he sat second to thee, offered himself to die for man's offense. O unexampled love, love nowhere to be found less than divine. Hail, Son of God, Savior of men! Thy name shall be the copious matter of my song henceforth, and never shall my heart thy praise forget, nor from thy Father's praise disjoin. Thus they in heaven, above the starry sphere, their happy hours in joy and hymning spent. Meanwhile, upon the firm opacous globe of this round world, whose first convex divides the luminous inferior orbs, Enclosed from chaos, and the inroad of darkness old, Satan alighted walks. A globe far off, it seemed, now seems a boundless continent dark, waste and wild, under the frown of night, starless exposed, and ever-threatening storms of chaos blustering round in clement sky, save on that side which from the wall of heaven Though distant far, some small reflection gains of glimmering air less vexed with tempest loud. Here walked the fiend at large in spacious field, as when a vulture on Emmaus bred, whose snowy ridge the roving Tartar bounds, dislodging from a region scarce of prey to gorge the flesh of lambs or yeanling kids, on hills where flocks are fed flies toward the springs of Ganges, or Hydaspes, Indian streams, but in his way lights on the barren plain of Saracana, where Chinese's drive with sails and wind their caney wagons light. So, on this windy sea of land, the fiend walked up and down alone, bent on his prey. Alone, 
For other creature in this place, living or lifeless, to be found was none, none yet. But store hereafter from the earth up hither like aerial vapors flew, of all things transitory and vain, when sin with vanity had filled the works of men. Both all things vain, and all who in vain things built their fond hopes of glory, or lasting fame, or happiness in this or the other life. All who have their reward on earth, the fruits of painful superstition and blind zeal, not seeking but the praise of men, here find fit retribution, empty as their deeds. All the unaccomplished works of nature's hand, abortive, monstrous, or unkindly mixed, dissolved on earth, fleet hither, and in vain, till final dissolution, wander here. Not in the neighboring moon, as some have dreamed, those argent fields more likely habitants, translated saints, or middle spirits hold betwixt the angelical and humankind. Hither of ill-joined sons and daughters born, first from the ancient world, those giants came, with many a vain exploit, though then renowned. The builders next of Babel, on the plain of Senaar, and still with vain design, new Babels, had they wherewithal, would build. Others came single. He, who to be deemed a god, leaped fondly into Etna flames and Pedocles. And he, who, to enjoy Plato's Elysium, leaped into the sea, Cleombrotus. And many more too long, embryos and idiots, Eremites and friars, white, black, and gray, with all their trumpery. Here, pilgrims roam, that strayed so far to seek in Golgotha him dead, who lives in heaven. And they, who, to be sure of paradise dying, put on the weeds of Dominic, or in Franciscan think to pass disguised. They pass the planet seven, and pass the fixed, and that crystalline sphere, whose balance weighs the trepidation, talked, and that first moved. And now St. Peter of heaven's wicket seems to wait them with his keys. And now at foot of heaven's ascent they lift their feet, when lo, a violent cross wind from either coast blows them transverse, ten thousand leagues awry into the devious air. Then might ye see cowls, hoods, and habits, with their wearers tossed and fluttered into rags. Then relics, beads, indulgences, dispenses, pardons, bulls, the sport of winds, all these, upwhirled aloft, fly o'er the backside of the world far off into a limbo large and broad, since called the paradise of fools, to few unknown long after. Now, unpeopled and untrod, all this dark globe the fiend found as he passed. And long he wandered, till at last a gleam of dawning light turned thitherward in haste his travelled steps. Far distant he descries, ascending, by degrees magnificent up to the wall of heaven, a structure high, a top whereof, but far more rich, appeared the work as of a kingly palace gate, with frontispiece of diamond and gold embellished. Thick with sparkling orient gems the portal shone inimitable on earth by model, or by shading pencil drawn. These stairs were such as whereon Jacob saw angels ascending and descending, bands of guardians bright, when he from Esau fled to Padden Aram, in the field of Luz, dreaming by night under the open sky, and waking, cried, This is the gate of heaven! Each stair mysteriously was meant, nor stood there always but drawn up to heaven sometimes viewless, and underneath a bright sea flowed of jasper, or of liquid pearl, whereon who after came from earth, failing arrived wafted by angels, or flew o'er the lake, wrapped in a chariot, drawn by fiery steeds. The stairs were then let down, whether to dare the fiend by easy ascent, or aggravate his sad exclusion from the doors of bliss direct against which opened from beneath, just o'er the blissful seat of paradise, a passage down to the earth. 
a passage wide, wider by far than that of after times over Mount Zion. And though that were large over the promised land to God so dear, by which to visit oft those happy tribes, on high behests his angels to and fro past frequent, and his eye with choice regard from Peneus, the fount of Jordan's flood, to Beersaba, where the Holy Land borders on Egypt and the Arabian shore. So wide the opening seemed, where bounds were set to darkness, such as bound the ocean wave. Satan from hence, now on the lower stair, that scaled by steps of gold to heaven gate, looks down with wonder at the sudden view of all this world at once, as when a scout, through dark and desert ways, with peril gone all night, at last by break of cheerful dawn obtains the brow of some high-climbing hill, which to his eye discovers unaware the goodly prospect of some foreign land first seen, or some renowned metropolis, with glistering spires and pinnacles adorned, which now the rising sun gilds with his beams. Such wonder seized, though after heaven seen, the spirit malign, but much more envy seized, at sight of all this world beheld so fair. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where we ought to be, and when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we will not be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight, till by turning, turning, we come round right. Life is complex. Join us for the simple gifts of wisdom, love, and delight in the written word. John Milton's Paradise Lost, Book 3, Lines 555 through 742. Round he surveys, and well might, where he stood so high above the circling canopy of night's extended shade, from eastern point of Libra to the fleecy star that bears Andromeda far off Atlantic seas beyond the horizon. Then, from pole to pole he views in breadth, and without longer pause downright into the world's first region throws his flight precipitant and winds with ease through the pure marble air his oblique way amongst innumerable stars, that shone stars distant, but nigh hand seemed other worlds. Or other worlds they seemed, or happy isles, like those Hesperian gardens famed of old, fortunate fields and groves and flowery vales, thrice happy isles. But who dwelt happy there he stayed not to inquire. Above them all, the golden sun, in splendor likest heaven, allured his eye. Thither his course he bends, through the calm firmament, but up or down, by center or eccentric, hard to tell, or longitude, where the great luminary aloof the vulgar constellations thick, that from his lordly eye keep distance due, dispenses light from far. They as they move their starry dance in numbers that compute days, months, and years, towards his all-cheering lamp turn swift their various motions, or are turned by his magnetic beam that gently warms the universe, and to each inward part with gentle penetration, though unseen, shoots invisible virtue even to the deep. So wondrously was set his station bright, there lands the fiend, a spot like which perhaps astronomer in the sun's lucent orb through his glazed optic tube yet never saw. The place he found beyond expression bright, compared with aught on earth, metal or stone. Not all parts like, but all alike informed with radiant light, as glowing iron with fire. If metal, part seemed gold, part silver clear. If stone, carbuncle most, or chrysolite, ruby or topaz, to the twelve that shone in Aaron's breastplate, 
and a stone besides imagined rather oft than elsewhere seen. That stone, or like to that, which here below philosophers in vain so long have sought, in vain, though by their powerful art they bind volatile Hermes, and call up unbound in various shapes old Proteus from the sea, drained through a limbic to his native form. What wonder then, if fields and regions here breathe forth elixir pure, and rivers run potable gold, when with one virtuous touch the archchemic sun, so far from us remote, produces, with terrestrial humor mixed, here in the dark so many precious things of color glorious, and effect so rare? Here matter new to gaze the devil met, undazzled. Far and wide his eye commands. For sight no obstacle found here, nor shade, but all sunshine. As when his beams at noon culminate from the equator, as they now shot upward still direct, whence no way round, shadow from body opaque can fall. And the air, nowhere so clear, sharpened his visual ray to objects distant far, whereby he soon saw within Ken a glorious angel stand, the same whom John saw also in the sun. His back was turned, but not his brightness hid. Of beaming sunny rays a golden tiar circled his head, nor less his locks behind, illustrious on his shoulders, fledged with wings, lay waving round. On some great charge employed he seemed, or fixed in cogitation deep. Glad was the spirit impure, as now in hope to find who might direct his wandering flight to paradise, the happy seat of man, his journey's end and hour beginning woe. But first, he casts to change his proper shape, which else might work him danger or delay. And now a stripling cherub he appears, not of the prime, yet such as in his face youth smiled celestial, and to every limb suitable grace diffused, so well he feigned. Under a coronet his flowing hair in curls on either cheek played. Wings he wore of many a colored plume sprinkled with gold his habit fit for speed succinct, and held before his decent steps a silver wand. He drew not nigh unheard, the angel bright, ere he drew nigh, his radiant visage turned, admonished by his ear, and straight was known the archangel Uriel, one of the seven who in God's presence, nearest to his throne, stand ready at command, and are his eyes that run through all the heaven, or down to the earth bear his swift errands over moist and dry, or sea and land. Him Satan thus accosts. Uriel, for thou of those seven spirits that stand in sight of God's high throne, gloriously bright, the first art want his great authentic will interpreter through highest heaven to bring where all his sons thy embassy attend. And here art likeliest by supreme decree like honor to obtain, and as his eye to visit oft this new creation round, unspeakable desire to see and know all these his wondrous works, but chiefly man, his chief delight and favor, him for whom all these his works so wondrous he ordained hath brought me from the choirs of cherubim alone thus wandering. Brightest seraph, tell, in which of all these shining orbs hath man his fixed seat? Or fixed seat hath none, but all these shining orbs his choice to dwell, that I may find him, and with secret gaze or open admiration him behold, on whom the great Creator hath bestowed worlds, and on whom hath all these graces poured, that both in him and all things, as is meet, the universal maker we may praise, who justly hath driven out his rebel foes to deepest hell, and, to repair that loss, created this new happy race of men to serve him better. Wise are all his ways. So spake the false dissembler unperceived, for neither man nor angel can discern hypocrisy, the only evil that walks invisible, 
except to God alone, by his permissive will, through heaven and earth. And oft, though wisdom wake, suspicion sleeps at wisdom's gate, and to simplicity resigns her charge, while goodness thinks no ill where no ill seems, which now for once beguiled Uriel, though regent of the sun, and held the sharpest sighted spirit of all in heaven, who, to fraudulent impostor foul, in his uprightness, answer thus returned. Fair angel, thy desire, which tends to know the works of God, thereby to glorify the great work master, leads to no excess that reaches blame, but rather merits praise the more it seems excess, that led thee hither from thy imperial mansion thus alone, to witness with thine eyes what some, perhaps, contented with report, here only in heaven. For wonderful indeed are all his works, pleasant to know, and worthiest to be all had in remembrance always with delight. But what created mind can comprehend their number, or the wisdom infinite that brought them forth, but hid their causes deep? I saw when at his word the formless mass, this world's material mold, came to a heap. Confusion heard his voice, and wild uproar stood ruled, stood vast infinitude confined, till at his second bidding darkness fled, light shone, and order from disorder sprung. Swift to their several quarters hasted then the cumbrous elements, earth, flood, air, fire. And this ethereal quintessence of heaven flew upward, spirited with various forms that rolled orbicular and turned to stars numberless, as thou seest, and how they move. Each had his place appointed, each his course, the rest in circuit walls this universe. Look downward on that globe whose hither side with light from hence, though but reflected, shines. That place is earth, the seat of man. That light his day, which else as the other hemisphere night would invade. But there, the neighboring moon, so call that opposite fair star, her aid timely interposes, and her monthly round still ending, still renewing, Though mid heaven, with borrowed light her countenance triform hence fills and empties to enlighten the earth, and in her pale dominion checks the night. That spot to which I point is paradise, Adam's abode, those lofty shades his bower. Thy way thou canst not miss, me mine requires. Thus said, he turned. And Satan, bowing low, as to superior spirits is wont in heaven, where honor due and reverence none neglects, took leave. And toward the coast of earth beneath, down from the ecliptic, sped with hoped success, throws his steep flight in many an airy wheel, nor stayed till on Nifity's top he lights. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be, and when we find ourselves in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we will not be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight, till by turning, turning, we come round right.